This is a single family house in a really good neighborhood. A lot of people think that in the really good areas you can't have solid rental income and cash flow. They think that because they're in an A plus area, it's not possible. Um, it totally is possible. It's just up here, uh, we're in the northwest area of London, so great area in London. Overall, highest average income of any area in, in London. We, uh, what do we pick it up for? I get picked up for 330,000. Private deal from a wholesaler. This is the problem when you do a lot of deals, where, you know, when I was doing one or two deals, it's like the numbers are fresh. Now I gotta literally go into the Excel file and be like, okay, we've got 50 properties, 150 tenants. I can't even remember the names of some of our tenants. That's how bad it's getting. Uh, that's one of the issues of scaling up. It's going from a small real estate portfolio of say 10 properties, you know, 20 or 30 units, to going to, you know, 150 units. That's a huge scale up and there's a lot of things you have to learn to, to kind of overcome as your real estate portfolio goes from being just a few properties that you kind of manage to this big beast of a business that's generating a lot of cash flow and at the end of the day you have to treat it like a business. We're going to get in here, we're going to renovate it. We've got it vacant now, which is great. It's an opportunity to, to transform it and we'll talk about some of the numbers. I think that, you know, 330 acquisition plus, you know, some, some cost to acquire, call it 370 all in, 375 with your rental budget, maybe 380. And you've got a property that's worth, in this market, over 450000 when it's all said and done. In those bigger properties, you've just got to put in more bedrooms. And the key is managing that bed to bathroom ratio, as well as uh, London has some strict rules on how many bedrooms you're allowed to have, so you've got to be kind of careful. When you can duplex a property, that's really nice, because you can get away with, uh, let's say you had a six bedroom, you could just rent you know, five of the bedrooms and call the six one an office and just say, look, you know, you guys do what you want to do. I'm only allowed to have this many bedrooms in the property, but you guys do whatever you want. You'll still get a premium rent for having that extra bedroom. This kid could probably, it could probably rent for seven beds at 500 beds, 3,500 a month, plus the lower 1,000. You could probably crank out 4,000 to 4,500 a month safely from this property. That's, that's well over the 1% rule, um, which basically means that your levered return should be about 25% return on your investment before appreciation, before the retail arbitrage opportunity. So this one's just a, you know, it's an average deal. It's not like one I'm really excited about, but it is one I think that uh, is a solid base hit. And that's what you need is it's just solid base hits. A lot of people sit on the sidelines and they don't swing at all. It's a good backyard though, eh? Like, natural, you back onto some, some park here. The grass is a little long, I'll be honest. The garage has, has hydro, you've got a detached garage over here. Pretty good. You know, it's a nice, nice park back there with some trees. What do you want in London for 30% for less than the average detached property? Great size lot, close to Western University. Okay. So many keys. We, uh, I'm pretty sure we went and put a mortgage on this for what we paid for it. Um, we had it appraised, and our appraisal came in. I think we we bought it, did nothing. We've done nothing to it, by the way. It's just zero renovation so far. Uh, we closed like 330, I believe, and uh, sold for, you know, reappraised for 400. So we've done nothing so far. We put a mortgage on for 320. So the investor has almost no down payment. This is the kind of deals like it's the best when you can put a mortgage on it at 3% for almost 100% of the purchase price because you're buying smart. Gives you a good start. So I don't know if these aren't keys aren't labeled very well. Again, I, I usually like to tag my keys, but they came from the lawyer like this. So we'll do some trial and error. I think this one says side door, come on in. So we're in here in this property, which is almost a full burr before we've done the renovation. It's like a three quarters burr before you've even done a renovation. That's what you want. You want to put a mortgage on it on close before you do any work at all and have a mortgage on it so you're like 5% down because the bank appraised it much higher than we bought it for and they'll loan 80% loan to value. But let's do a little tour because how do you cash flow a house like this? It's already been converted in a lot of ways, but how do you do it? So with this older kitchen, I guess I'm kind of take a look around. We'll put all new appliances in here. 
It's honestly for a student rental, not that bad. These cabinets are in decent condition. We could put a new countertop down, clean this up, make this breakfast bar a little bit nicer. I think we'll take this second fridge out here, put a nice big double fridge over there. And then in here, it makes no sense for us to have another fridge. Sometimes students like having the extra fridge, but I like to put laundry in here. A nice big deep closet for laundry. And then we'll make another little, there'll be a little apartment in the lower. So we'll go check that out in a sec. Out here, you've got a living room. Um, they're using it as like a dining room, but you could set this up as sort of a living room. You can mount a TV on the wall and put a small sectional across the corner here quite easily. Um, and, and you, you know, have a little living room thing going on here. Your main front entrance, you've got a little closet here. We'll call this room number one on the main floor. They've turned what it was a dining room into a bedroom. It's got good size, lot, lots of windows all around here. This room's what, maybe 11 by to the back? 13, 11 by 13, a little bit smaller in this one corner. Good size bedroom, easily 550, cleaned up. Now the carpet's nasty, we'll take that out, we'll put it in, we'll paint everything, make it nice, put new vinyl plank, click floors in. I love vinyl plank, click, fantastic product. Stands up to water, students drop their water glass, they drop some coffee on the floor, it handles anything, they throw up on the floor, no damage. Carpets get ruined, laminate gets the cracking going on. I'll show you here, come look at the laminate. This is what happens to laminate, these are laminate floors. This is what happens to laminate over time. See that? This is not even a good example of buckling. There isn't a lot of buckling here, actually. The rest of this floor is in pretty good shape, but buckling is what you'll get. You get it's wet in the seams and it'll start to buckle. That's what laminate does. I'm not a big fan of laminate products. So you got bedroom number one, the main floor, theoretically. Got three more bedrooms and a bath up here, and they're good sized rooms. Two huge, ooh, tennis swag. Check this out. Projector. Mount this guy. I love tenant swag. We taking this home with us. Check it out, see if it works. We found a really cool gaming desktop the other day at one of our properties we bought. That's cool too, I love hashtag tenant swag. The hardwood floors in here are really nice. This is the original hardwood floors. The era of this house is probably early 60s. So these are the original. They might've been refinished once, but they're in pretty good shape. We could refinish them, but for a student rental, just leave them. You'll notice all the windows are already uh, double paned argon gas. They're a bit dirty, but other than that, they've been replaced probably in the last, yeah, low E argon gas filled windows. These have been down in the last 10, 10 or so years. So there's no issue here at all with these, win these windows are great. We'll do paint throughout, clean, just spruce it up really. This bedroom, huge bedroom. We've got what, 10, 11 feet by 12 or 13. It's a great size room, uh, despite not looking that big. So that was room number two, room number three. This room's a bit smaller. I would say it's maybe 10 by 11, 10 by 12 maybe, with a closet. Again, new windows in there. This room here's a good size. This is probably 12 by 12. By 12. We could count it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So 10 by 11, my bad, 10 by 11. Uh, and then a closet, so. There you go. Look at this. This is one way to keep access to your pipes. They've had a water leak at one point and had to install shutoffs. And instead of putting a nice clean, you can get a plastic clean out you put on here that opens and closes. They've just left it in the closet. And because people hang their clothes here, you normally don't see it. But they've got, it's all copper lines, uh, sweat joints, and uh, we've got shutoffs, which is actually great. If you ever need to repair anything, just shut the water off right here and here without shutting the whole house down, which is great. And another thing you'll notice, look at this. This is concrete board behind this uh, behind this tub surround. So we know that the person who installed this didn't just use cheap gypsum or blue board, they went all out and used concrete board. So those are little things that are nice to see. Um, I didn't see any major issues when we inspected the house. That was actually in relatively good condition. So that was what, room number four. And then we got a full washroom here. At some point someone's put this tile in. It's actually in good shape. Other than painting in here, taking this little wallpaper banner off and cleaning this up, these tiles are not in bad shape, and that tub's been done newer. It's dirty, obviously. We gotta put new, uh, you know, what kind of shower head is this? It's, someone's updated this like 15 years ago, probably. It's not original for sure, but I would update it, put a nice, you know, wide rain shower, and that's a nice deep soaker style tub. Probably toss a new vanity, clean this up. New floors, of course, needs a clean job. It's really dirty right now. But you got a nice, nice bathroom. These three bedrooms share, which is great. Take you down to the, the sunken level here, which is kind of cool. Because this house just keeps going on. 
or maybe it was a bad use of space as a single family, there's a ton of potential as a potentially a student rental or, you know, to a big family who will pay a premium dollar because we do have lots of parking out there. Uh, windows are quite dirty right now, but you got parking for like six or eight cars on a quiet cul-de-sac, nice detached garage with a workshop and hydro. Big plot of land. So separate entrance that we came in over there on the side, which is great for these guys having separate entrance. Come on down. We've got uh, great ceiling height. I can't even touch. My reach is eight feet. So this is above eight feet here. Um, you've got two good sized rooms, but this is sort of interesting. So the first room is a basic room. You walk in, it's got a nice hallway right across from the bathroom over there. So that's the second bathroom. There's three. And this room here, brand new windows put in. Sliders, argon glass sliders, big window. Like this is, this is four feet by like almost three feet. So a huge window. It's partially above ground right here. sort of like a sunken area. They've converted this into a nice bedroom, really. Got, you know, look at this. This wooden bed frame here. They have a gas fireplace, which is a pretty cool upgrade someone's put in over time right here. So this person's got their own temperature control. This room's what, maybe 14 by 10, plus a long hallway. So this is a good size room, easily 500 something a month. So we've already just seen, this is the fifth room, we've already seen 2,500 a month in rent, right here, we're not even done yet. Across from the bathroom, you've got a full, full shower in there, you got a vanity and a toilet. Dated or replaced the toilet, I mean, I don't really like the marble toilet look. It's kind of cool though. You gotta admit, that's, that's kind of cool. It's the uh, inefficient, probably 16 liter flush. We gotta put in more efficient toilets. We're gonna save ourselves a few hundred dollars a year in water usage alone by putting in more efficient toilets. This room here, again, new windows as well, good sizes. It's a double room, so very interesting in that there's this room, which is maybe nine by 10, and then you got a second room over here, across another door. So this is a good, I call it a double room. So a double room, the cool thing about a double room is you get a couple in this double room or something, or if you put a couple in here, they put their double bed in here, they can close this door off. One person can work in the office, someone who works from home might like this. The double rooms are really cool. Instead of taking this wall out, I like to leave this wall in. So instead of having a 20 by 10 room, I'd rather have these two rooms, kind of a cool you know, use of space. I could probably get, as a large room, maybe 600. As a double room, I can get 700, potentially even more. Uh, if you have two friends who are really close or two brothers going to Western or something like that, they might share this room even. And, uh, or even use this room and then have a guest pull out futon for if their family comes to stay. This room's awesome. This, I guess what, that we had four rooms upstairs, five. This is like six and seven kind of thing. And then we have a whole basement yet, which would be a great bachelor apartment, which would make us like our eight bedroom, almost uh, kind of thing going on. Again, good height down here. You come down these stairs. I put a door right there, put a door right there on that entranceway. Boom, put a metal fire rated door, lock it, put laundry up there, upstairs, and then this becomes a nice, nice unit. If you open this up, this sketchy bedroom here, it's, it's sort of a weird use of space. There's no window. These are exterior walls, so we could pop out an egress window here. But there's no egress window here. This was sort of an illegal den, is what they would have called it. If you, you really want to open this all up and make this a really nice bachelor apartment, I'd open this right up. It's not load bearing. There's no, no beam in here. If there is, you build, you use MDF trim to build around the columns. And then it looks like a really bougie way of sort of hiding the fact that you've got metal support posts. We call them jack posts. So this will be open through to the room over there. You have a nice open concept. We might do like a breakfast bar island here, wrap a proper kitchen around here. I think punching this out to a proper egress window makes a lot of sense. Not widening it, because that requires a new lentil up top, but instead just deepening the window that's already here. This is like a 40 inch window, so we could go 40 by 22 and we'll meet building code. It'll be one of those casement windows that pops right out and that'll meet full safety means of escape. So that's a nice safe thing to do. We want to have that in every bedroom. You've got to have good sized windows to escape, uh, especially down here if it's its own unit. And we'll box in this furnace. We'll use two by three or even potentially two by four. It's not a low bearing wall. We could just hide this nicely, put some pocket doors here and kind of clean this up. So this is just a storage room. And then you get your nice kitchen, living slash bedroom area. This wall will open up as well. Open all of this stuff up because you have that open concept feel. And if you can look across your 25 feet, by 15 feet, it feels much bigger than 
you know, if you got it kind of closed in. So in here, we'll, we'll probably move the laundry into a stackable because it makes the most sense and build this, box this in, put laundry upstairs so that there's no need for anyone to come down into this unit to do laundry anymore. And then move this wall over so we can put a full shower because right now this half washroom, look at this hack job, guys. This is crazy. People just don't, they, they just do it yourself, you know? People start mudding and taping, they start getting at things, they put in a vanity, a really nice glossy vanity, and then don't have the countertop for it, so they patch in two pieces of laminate with a different style sink that fits this vanity. I'll just custom order a piece of quartz cell, which is vanity. The vanity is beautiful, I love this high res. And this toilet's a low flow, EcoSense dual flush. We'll be able to repurpose this. We just have to add a shower in here. So 36 by 36 shower, boom, finish off the kitchen and then now yeah, you have an apartment. So it's a great way to make good use of this space. It was underutilized and, un and wasn't rented at all down here. They're using this as like laundry storage space. That room was full of all of the students stuff. So they're just using it as a storage space down here. And we get an extra thousand dollars a month in rent out of turning this into a little suite. So secondary suites. I want to do a video on some of the stuff that we can talk about. But one thing, look at the height we got up here. We have seven and a half feet almost. The ductwork in some spots will have to be reconfigured, make it more of a pancake style so we can get that finished 6.5. But we're, we're pretty darn close actually. Even under, this is the main support beam. Even under the support beams, we've got good height, um, well over 6.5. So that, that's, that's what you need for minimum code. We'll put in the in insulation between all the joists the rock saw safe and sound. Pro tip though, the pink fiberglass stuff does the exact same thing from an STC soundproofing rating, but comes at about one quarter of the cost. So you can actually use the Owens Corning or the, the cheap fiberglass insulation to get almost the same effect as the rock saw safe and sound if you're just trying to find a cheaper way to get the almost the same effect. And I like the 5 8 uh, drywall with the resilient channel. It's my favorite. So the drywall is all suspended, not screwed directly into any of the joists. It creates a really great vibration sound layer. So when they're down here watching TV or making noise, the people upstairs in the kitchen and the living, living room above us don't hear that and they aren't bothered by it. So that's a great way to get things done. Um, this will have to all be firewalled here. If it's not already, we'll do some pilot holes and find out. Then you have to add basically a 5 8 fire drywall as well as, uh, of course, the safe and sound insulation for the STC rating. So that's the big thing. Any unfinished areas, we'll just pop in like the furnace room over there. If we can't get the 5 8 drywall everywhere for fire code, what we'll do is just put a sprinkler system in there, which they're really cheap to get and you just slowly solder it off of one of the copper pipes. There's a cool water line in there, super easy to do, and then it'll pass uh, for fire inspection. So that's a great way to get things done. Um, knowing the, the basic building code requirements you're gonna have to have means of escape, two means of escape from here, as well as having those fire code requirements met, including these strobe smoke uh, detectors. There you go, guys. This is an example of one property, one project. We're doing lots of them where a lot of people might pass this deal up and think, I can't make this cash flow. It's in the wrong area. You know, they might think I have to look in East London, but you can look in Northwest and find cash flow too. I've got lots of properties in Northwest London. The cash flow past the 1% rule. And by the way, most realtors today, most investors today will say it's impossible that 1% rule in London. That is not true. I'm still buying a 10 cap and I can just go ahead and sell at six or seven cap all day long. So that's the, that's the business. That's the model. Um, Ooh, you know what I forgot? Electrical, let's go take a look guys. The plumbing you guys noticed was all uh, updated. This has all been done in uh, ABS. There's no cast iron here at all. It's all newer uh, piping. So when this house was built, I might've been wrong about the age of this, this place. It might be 70s or 80s. There was a time where they were using aluminum wiring. Some of this is aluminum, I believe. And we've got fuse panel here instead of breaker. Breaker's the more modern system. Fuse is when they do, when they do trip you gotta put a new, a new fuse in, whereas a breaker when it trips, you can just flick it back and forth. So that's the downside. Um, it meets current codes. It is actually okay to have a fuse panel. You don't need to have breaker. There's no reason to upgrade other than convenience sake of being able to have that, uh, just have the flexibility of being able to have the things turn off and on. If we do decide to leave this and not upgrade, we may, I don't know if we have enough space. This isn't gonna be space on here, but if we wanted to add, for instance, some more plugs down here, and we're out of space, we have to upgrade our panel anyway. So if we're gonna do that, we might put in a brand new Siemens breaker panel, 100 amp, or depends what the service is outside, it might be 200 amp, because there is the shop. So I'd have to check that. But yeah, it gives you kind of an idea of what you're looking for. Aluminum wiring, also not a danger. A lot of insurance companies don't like aluminum wiring. I'm not hugely against aluminum wiring. The junctions though, wherever you connect to a light fixture, to a switch, to a plug, you need to pink tail to copper to connect to a regular outlet or a regular light fixture. So you need to basically have a little pink, a little purple Nolax cable and put some Nolax paste so there isn't any arcing because 
aluminum runs really hot and over time it'll arc and cause fires if you don't have the right receptacle device hooked up to your aluminum wiring. So that's really important that making sure if you do have aluminum wiring coming into a copper receptacle or a um, switch or a light fixture that's designed to take copper and you connect aluminum to that, you're gonna have an issue of arcing and fires later on. So that's, that's where it's only risky with aluminum. Aluminum's totally safe and totally fine so long as the junction connections are done with no lax paste and then pink tail the copper, right, copper wire. Or the other option is you just get devices that are rated for aluminum. So rated for aluminum wire. And then you're totally fine, totally safe. I don't know why people make such a big deal of these things when it's actually not bad. Knob and tube's a different story. We can have a chat about that. Anyway, we're not gonna talk about electricals. That's not my specialty. I'm just a guy who knows a little bit about real estate and a little bit about construction for everything. So this is the place. What are the numbers? 330,000 for this, this property, I believe, plus a wholesale fee. Buy it right away, did no work to it. Got it appraised at 400,000 put a mortgage on it, 80% loan to value, which puts that 320,000 mortgage right on it before we've done any work, any value add yet. And I think it'll ARV closer to 450, 470. And we're gonna be able to rent this for probably 4,500 once we put another suite down here. So there you go, you're well over 1% rule and your cash flow in a couple grand a month, between 1,000 and $2,000 a month, depending on your mortgage terms and paying on some of the expenses like property taxes, which are actually understated in this area in my opinion. And if you, this property is well insulated, which it is, then the utilities will be a lot lower than you might think to heat this property. So there you go, guys. If you like this kind of video and you want to learn more about how to cash flow properties, you think it's valuable for me to show more videos like this, smash a like button, hit the subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Say, Mike, I'd love you to do another video on student rentals. I'd like to do a video on how you flip property. Mike, you're doing a whole bunch of flips. How is it different when you go into a property to flip it? versus when you go into cash flow it. So if I was flipping this, I'd have a different strategy than if I was trying to cash flow it. It's not all about the bedrooms in the flip scenario. We'd go nicer finishes potentially, depending on the area. There's different things we do, different strategies, depending on what our end outcome is. And this, this goal is to get the investor's capital out as quickly as possible, have no money in the project, and then have $1,000 a month at least cash flow coming in our pockets. So that's the end goal with this property, is creating cash flow and building equity long-term, as opposed to trying to flip it for a profit. Though most of my deals that are good equity plays also make good flip plays. There you have it. The secret to unlocking it well through you is to just start doing. No, okay, it's to spend less, earn more, and maximize your returns. But you gotta start doing, take action today. If you don't start taking action today, you're not gonna be 1% better than you were yesterday. You're not gonna move the needle forward. Too many people sit on the sidelines, they're watching this video, and they're saying, Mike, I wanna start investing, but I'm not sure how to get started. Start managing some properties for some friends. Joint venture with someone. Get into real estate and find a way. You know, maybe you start out in contracting. Maybe just volunteer for someone. That's how you learn the game. Once you get into the game, you'll find the barriers and the hurdles to entry are not near as difficult as you might have thought to making in real estate often 25 to 100% return on our investment per year. And in a lot of situations, I've been able to make six, more than six figures um, on certain properties. So you can make a ton of money, more than your day job income from one good property. That's all it takes. And if you can do five, 10 in a year, you're laughing your way all the way to financial freedom. So thanks for watching guys.